Hi folks, it's unbelievable. You and I have survived a year like no other in the history of the United States. We have gone through a very difficult pandemic and we have survived it together. And I just wanna say thank you for all your dedication and commitment and for all the good work that you have done during this very difficult time. Let me start by thanking all our associates, our physicians, our nurses, our respiratory therapists, facilities folks, the materials management, EBS, our board members, our donors, there are so many people to really thank for all the good work they've done during this time. They have really tackled times of unprecedented proportions and they've really met the demands of this time in a, in a great way and they really are, are our heroes. Everyone in our hospital as a team really have worked as our heroes during this time. Our people here at White Memorial started preparing back in February 2020. You know, we saw our first case of COVID on March 17 of 2020. We pulled together, anticipated the potential need, and started looking for solutions, you know, on how to deal with this pandemic. How do we make our workplace safe for our patients? Our executive teams, our director, managers, and physicians approach this crisis with thoughtfulness, responsiveness, and creativity as well. And we rallied together as a system. Our support from our organization, Adventist Health West, our corporate offices was incredible during that time. And they were set up to address our needs whenever and whatever we needed. And that's included sharing information that's very relevant and up to the moment about medical supplies, about standards of care. And as you know, during this time, you have so many people with so many opinions, and it's so important that you have one set of guidelines. And our corporation provided us this one set of guidelines so there's no confusion and you don't wonder what to do. And you don't listen to the zillions of rumors and zillions of people telling you uh, what to do. So we made changes as a result of that. Of course, you had to make changes. We made changes in the way we practice medicine. We increased the, sa the safety measures. Um, as you know, we stopped elective surgeries because they were putting a lot of strain on our beds, availability of our, our beds. We had to make changes to our visitors' rules and who can come in and who can't because we needed to control the infection. We had to set up screening uh, stations for everybody that comes into the hospital, whether it's an uh, associate, whether it's a physician, whether it's a visitor, whether it's a patient. Everybody was screened at the front entrances. You know, in our emergency room, we had to set two separate processes for people coming in. We had a COVID process and we had a non-COVID process. On the inpatient side, as you all uh, remember, we had two cohort patients. So all COVID patients are present in the same wing, in the same area, so we don't mix COVID with non-COVID patients. So cohorting was a big step for us to make sure that we are controlling the spread of the pan pandemic and the infection. With this roller coaster ride of COVID going up and go, go COVID coming down and a surge upon a surge upon a surge, fatigue was setting in with our people. We knew it's gonna be a long journey. However, we're so thankful for our military who lent us a hand. We had three strike teams that came to help our physicians and nurses, and they had the greatest attitude ever. They were here to help, they knew that, and they were so flexible. We really appreciated what they have done. Uh, the Air Force, uh, the Army, uh, and the generals uh, that all show, showed up. And I remember General Glenn Van Herc that came over. He's the top general in the, in the nation and toured our facility and also recognized a lot of the folks deployed here from military as well. Um, so that really invigorated us. That gave us hope. They gave us, uh, gave us strength uh, to keep going uh, by providing services to our community. Also, I don't want to forget the help that we got from FEMA by building a field hospital right here on our campus. 
They built an 80 bed uh, field hospital at the cost of over $16 million. So our state of California office, uh, California office in emergency as well as FEMA teamed together and they helped us build this hospital in case we have another surge we will be ready. I'm thankful to our politicians uh, that came, came in and helped us in multiple different ways, connected us in multiple different ways. I'm grateful for the supplies that we were able to get. You know, at the beginning, you know, supplies were very difficult to come by. Um, but with time, we're able to secure enough supplies to continue providing the care uh, that we needed to continue. We, we have used over 1 million isolation gowns, 2 million face masks, 13.3 million gloves, and I can go on and on with the oxygen supplies, with the testing supplies, we you know, it uh, just goes on and on. So we're very thankful for the help that we got from our system, from our government officials, from all the agencies that really helped us secure enough supplies for our patients. And of course, the testing and the vaccination as, as well. Um, I mean, when we started, you know, testing wasn't really available very readily. We had to wait 10 days to get test results. And that's, you know, I think that was very difficult to wait that long. And the patient were still coming in and the volumes were building and we didn't have enough supplies uh, for testing to, to test everybody. However, now we're at a place where we can actually get, you know, get a test and get results in less than half an hour, sometimes 15 minutes. We have the results of the test. So testing have come a long way. Today, we are doing over 5,000 vaccinations a week here on our campus. We do, we do vaccinations on the weekend in the cafeteria. During the week, we do the vaccinations at our gymnasium. And April 17, we'll start what we call the mass vaccination clinic, where we'll be doing 30,000 vaccina vaccinations a week. So that's a huge increase in number of vaccinations that we're doing. We're very proud of how we're able to team together with multiple partners and we're able to serve our community and be able to vaccinate as many as our community members as we could. The physician engagement also was very stellar. We had formed five physician groups to help us with COVID planning and execution. We had, to, we had calls uh, on a daily basis, every day in the morning, eight o'clock. Uh, we had a call with our physicians to learn from the field, from the floors, what's going on in the hospital, what do they need, what are they lacking? So uh, communication with our doctors was critical uh, to understand uh, what's going on and be able to respond to these needs very quickly. Communication throughout the whole organization. Uh, you know, organization as big as ours is very complex. So you have to communicate with our leadership, which we did on a routine basis. We had to communicate with our uh, frontline staff uh, on a regular basis, our board of directors uh, as well. We had regular uh, written communication that went to the board of directors on a regular basis. Uh, so throughout the whole organization, communication was, was extremely important. And our corporation, our corporation set up a command center that we had executives join in that command center, very frequent communication with our corporation who was able to supply also what we needed uh, as well. And our community responded as well. Our foundation raised close to about $8.5 million in 2020. 850,000 of that came as donations for our COVID expenses and PPEs or protective personal equipment. Oscar De La Hoya, he supported us and he gave us $250,000 to support our COVID expenses again. So I can't say thank you enough for our community for stepping in and helping. We had the local firefighters, local police. We had the local car club that came in and, and uh, uh, did a hero uh, celebration here at the hospital by driving th their classic cars through the hospitals. The restaurants that delivered countless times, food, pizza, sandwiches to our employees as well. I'm thankful for Mayor Garcetti, who came to our campus to thank them and to deliver masks and supply to our frontline associates. We also were fortunate to be able to deliver food to our uh, neighborhood. You know, our neighborhood, our community was struck very heavily and they were suffering. A lot of people lost their jobs. 
economy wasn't good, and they were struggling uh, with the day-to-day -day necessities of life. So we're able to deliver about 25,000 bags of groceries, 20-pound bags of groceries, uh, to our elderly people in our community. We provided 155,000 grab-and-go meals to our local families. And folks, we also were able to provide 17,000 meals to our homeless population as well. This pandemic has been pretty tough on our community and on us in the United States in general. We lost over half a million people to COVID in the United States. However, we also here at White Memorial were able to attend to and treat 2,500 COVID patients and the majority of them went back to their families healthy and they were able to rejoin their families and a community. And we celebrate that success as well. We're truly in this together. And the level of collaboration and support is more than I've ever seen before in my 30 years in healthcare. So let's uh, think about what does the future hold from us and what have we learned from our experience uh, with COVID. Now, no doubtedly, COVID has caused a lot of disruption in many different ways in the way we do things. However, we had to do things more innovatively and think innovatively in how to serve our patients and our community. Our Adventist Health Organization and us here at White Memorial have, have met severe financial challenges as well. And we had to learn how to manage in a, an environment where you had decreased volumes and decreased revenue and increasing cost as well in caring for the cost. We learned how to operate more efficiently. We operate how to work in a virtual environment and we worked, we learned how to survive in a very difficult time. However, we remain strong and we're still strong. Despite of the financial trouble, troubles that we faced. Adventist Health and White Memorial will be around for a very long time to come. We'll be here for the next hundred years and this, will, this pandemic will not stop us where we are. We are lo looking forward for the future. We are investing in our hospital, we're investing in our community, and we're expanding lines of service and enhancing our clinical quality uh, going into the future. So how are we investing in our future? Folks, we're expanding our operating room capacity. We're building two more operating rooms. And this will increase patient satisfaction. And that will increase physician satisfaction as well. We're also reconfiguring and retrofitting our East Tower, which will set us for the future to be able to utilize that tower for many services that we need. Our corporation, Adventist Health and White Memorial, has a vision for, we have a vision for 2030. And that vision involves three divisions. The hospital division that we've always had and we're very good at. The well-being division, which we have done a lot of work here at White Memorial and as, and as a corporation in the well-being area as well. But I think we could turn it, we could move it to the next level, if you will, as well as the consumer division, which is a new division we just established uh, very recently. So our focus for the next 10 years is gonna be focusing on these three areas, hospitals, community, and consumers. So starting with the community, we are introducing a project called, called the Blue Zone. The Blue Zone is a project where we will teach our community how to eat better, how to live better, how to exercise better, and how to live longer. You know, there are six blue zones in the world, and these are uh, known for having the longest longevity of life in the world. And the reason they, uh, they live so long is because they do things a, a certain way. So we are bringing those disciplines from these six blue zones around the world into the East Los Angeles community to be able to teach the people how to live longer and what to do to live longer. We're very excited about it. And at White Memorial here, we're spending about $6.6 .6 million in the next five years to be able to accomplish that. So it's a big project that we are uh, extremely proud of and excited 
uh, about as well. We're also offering new things in the consumer field as well. I mean, we have a venture going on with Synchronous Health for behavioral health uh, to be offered to, to our population as well, to our employees, our uh, physicians, our caregivers, uh, and in future also uh, could be also offered to outside audiences as well. Mendition is an artificial, artificial intelligence screening process in our ED to triage patients. Uh, that's another innovation in the field of consumers. And then last but not least, uh, one example would be our hospital at home project where we actually admit patients to a med surge bed at their home. They will have the equipment, they will have the physician uh, remote monitoring, monitoring, and they also have nurses that would come and take care of them at home as well. So we're actually bringing the hospital, if you will, to their home as well. And these are just few examples of new offerings for the consumers that I'll be doing in the, in the future. And with that, folks, I wanna tell you that I'm, I'm so thankful for some things that we've embraced during this pandemic that will continue into the future. The increased safety precautions, the cleaning, the in, disinfecting, the virtual meetings. Of course, we'll need to be vigilant with these precautions to prevent the spread of the virus, but it's not over yet. The virus continues. However, we will have learnings from these things that will continue into the future. Folks, thank you so much for your outstanding commitment and loyalty to the hospital. That means a lot to us. You know, we've gone through a lot together in the last year, year and a half. And as we go and look to, into the future, you know, we will be here for the next hundred years and White Memorial will continue to be a beacon of light and hope for our community of East Los Angeles. Thank you and may God bless you.